<laughs> What's up everybody? I'm here with my dog Luna and uh, for this video I want to talk to you about how you are a creative person. You are so creative that you cannot help but to create. We are all creative beings. As a human being, that's who you are, all right? And the reason I say this is because I never thought that I was a creative person growing up. I was very analytical. I was a big time nerd. I still am. I was never into um, the traditional forms of art, such as like drawing, painting, uh, photography, whatever, all these things that I've, you know, associated with creative people, right? And it turns out that that's complete bullshit. All right. I didn't even realize until like recently that, you know, all those blog posts and videos that I've been making for the past decade, those are very creative works of art. Even if you're a programmer, your code is art. It requires lots of critical thinking, lots of creative thinking, lots of problem solving to be able to finish your project, right? And so throw out this idea that art is, you know, music, dance, uh, painting, all that stuff. Making content, like the content that I create is art. And whatever you are doing, your hobbies, it's art too. And it doesn't have to be art like how we were taught as, you know, or as I was taught growing up in a school that focused on science and engineering and math and all that stuff, right? So I recently have been listening to this podcast called Make Art, Not Content. And it's been really helpful because apparently artists go through an existential crisis every few months, or I don't know, at least I've been going through it every few months. Like, I don't know. It happens like a couple times a year or something where I feel like I I have this tremendous like self-doubt and fear of failure and I've talked about this years ago where I had like imposter syndrome, right? That was probably one of my first real talk videos and you guys loved it. You guys love these real talks. So, <laughs> but anyway, apparently it's normal for artists to have these sort of um, sort of, you know, like ruts, right? Where they feel like they're just down and they can't make things like they used to. So I recently heard an episode from it, which I printed out, I transcribed, and it's in the blog post, which I'll link to as well. Check the description later. But I'm going to read to you the section that I loved a lot. So here we go. Why do artists keep going from high on life to depressed? It's because they don't take care of their greatest asset, their mind. If your state of mind is peaking, you're in a state of flow, you're prolific, you're unstoppable, you're on fire. But the moment your state of mind falters, the moment your state of mind falters, it's over. Nothing is getting done. State of mind is everything. So how do you nurture, nurture yourself? How do you keep your mind sharp? How do you do self-care? Well, one thing is for sure, you don't do it by watching Netflix every night. All that normal people's self-care bullshit will only sink you deeper into self-loathing. And you certainly don't do it by going on social media over and over for hours every day. Do you, do you realize that every time you reach for your phone, you're basically telling the universe, no, I have no desire of reaching flow at all today. <laughs> Unless you're going on Instagram to enact a carefully predetermined plan to drop a few bombs to feed the audience that gives you life, you're building a brick wall between you and what used to be your tremendous potential. Are you okay with that? <laughs> the best self-care you could give yourself as an artist is to go outside your comfort zone right now and do something to remind yourself why you're incredible. Go create something, anything. 
Because all that thinking is solving nothing. Think after you create. Because your money problems aren't going to go away just by you dwelling on them. And you're not going to get better at your craft just by daydreaming about it. And by the way, when he says go out of your comfort zone, it could be as simple as going out and talking to strangers. Okay? It doesn't have to be anything profound. Okay? Just go outside your comfort zone. Right? People get so triggered when they hear me say, do more. But saying do more when you're talking about creating more art isn't like saying work more hours on Wall Street. Making art elevates you. Making art heals you. It's because you're not making art that you feel like shit. It's because you've morphed your relationship with art from something beautiful and spiritual into drudgery. You've turned it into an act of duty for Christ's sakes instead of an act of love. Everyone that's fucked up inside always has the same problems. Not enough volume. Not finishing enough work. They've stopped dropping bombs. Most people haven't even started. They're still in the thinking about it stage. No wonder you have uh, self-doubt. No wonder you have imposter syndrome. The next thing you make may suck. So hurry up and find out if it does. Hurry up and find out how much it sucks. It, does it suck and it's not salvageable? Or does it suck, but with time it could be a work of genius? Why are you endlessly thinking about things that you could just go and find out about? Who convinced you that this was okay? Why are you already telling yourself something that you haven't even created might not be good. Furthermore, when you make things, don't be surprised when it doesn't turn out perfect on the first try. And why is it that when it doesn't work out, your whole existence comes into question? If you could tell that something you made sucks, then that means you're winning. Why? Because it means you have taste. And all you have to do now is keep iterating until your art matches your taste it's not hard it's fun if you let it be fun so maybe you've been looking at things all wrong all right i'm gonna stop it there uh, the podcast keeps on going and talks about like 13 different things uh your 13 different signs that you're looking at it all wrong so anyway uh I hope that was inspirational to you as, it, as much as it was for me. And it's very applicable to my life. And I hope it is for you as well. So I look forward to your comments. It's been a, it's been a minute since I posted a video. So I really want to hear what you guys have to say. And I thank you for watching. And if you're not subscribed, please do so now. And I'll see you guys in the comments section. Thank you again and goodbye.